in their own particular way. But their simplification ignores two simple truths. First, that within Scotland there are choices to be made between the prosperous and the poor, and we won't shy from making them. And secondly, that working class people in Scotland share their ambitions, their fears, their problems and their hope with working class people in other parts of the United Kingdom. If Scotland succeeds, if, if Scotland succeeds when working class Scots succeed, then standing up for Scotland means standing up for those working class Scots. But it also means making common cause with working class people across the United Kingdom. We believe in that old trade union idea that an injury to one is an injury to all. We believe in the Labour idea of redistribution. This election isn't an extension of the referendum. It's about how all of Britain is run for the next five years. It's about the conflict of interest that sometimes exists between those who have power and the great majority who need a Labour government to protect their interests and to advance their rights and to share that power. The political and economic choice is pretty straightforward. Will it be the very poorest Scots who feel the cost of an unfair society or the most prosperous Britons who help pay the cost of a fairer society for everyone? In this party, we will never stop fighting for Scotland, but nor will we ever give up in that sense of solidarity. Doing the right thing in Scotland should never be an excuse for looking the other way when the wrong thing has been done in other parts of the United Kingdom. Because if you're a child eating from a food bank, doing without presents on your birthday or at Christmas, because your mum or dad can't get the hours they need, or you're a little bit older and you're sleeping in an overcrowded and overpriced flat. We don't care. We genuinely don't care what side of the River Tweed you grew up on. Poverty has no regard for geography. Poverty has no regard for nationality. We find common cause, and in this election, it's about people in those situations, north and south, of our non-existing border coming together to defeating a Tory government that has made the predicament so much worse. <laughs> and the policies that we offer are written in Scotland, of course they are. But we can only end Tory austerity and pay for those changes by acting in solidarity with the millions who are also desperate for the sort of change we're speaking about all across the UK. We can be part of a real progressive alliance. We can be part of a real progressive coalition. It's a coalition of Labour MPs electing the cities of the north of England and the industrial heartlands of England's Midlands and the valleys of Wales and inner city of London and the cities, towns and villages all across Scotland. That's the coalition that we are interested in. That is our progressive alliance. Now, now the votes of Scotland will decide whether David Cameron gets to stay or whether he has to go. If Scotland votes Labour, the whole of the UK gets a Labour government. But we know we can't do this alone, and the rest of the UK can't do it without us. That's the power that we hold as Scots. Scottish voters can block the change our country needs, or we can unlock that change. We can be just three weeks away from a Labour government. The possibilities that opens up for our people is the most exciting thing about this election. Our party, the Labour Party, our party, the, the Labour movement together has been the greatest force for progress in our nation's history. From creating the NHS to the minimum wage, for the campaign for the votes for women, to equal civil rights for all, 
from the rent strikes to the new towns to the free central heating for the elderly and much else besides. In just three weeks, we can again begin that work of change. Our party stands ready to deliver that change. In an age of cynicism, we stand here today to say we can do better than this. Scotland can do better than this. Britain can do better than this. We are optimistic about our nation's future. We know that our society can be more compassionate and our economy can be fairer. We know that the next generation can do better than this. Because we know that the power the voters hold in their hands on Poland Day can be used again so that our country can be the best place to grow up. Our country can be the best place to learn. Our country can be the most civilised place to work. Our nation can be the best place to be cared for. We can do this. We can again be the change that Scotland needs. Thank you very much. This, this idea, the idea that the Labour Party needs the SNP to make us bold. Look, the SNP have been a steady as you go type of government in Scotland. There's been very little radical. There's mm -hmm. been absolutely nothing redistributive. So it's And look, the challenge from Labour's manifesto today is which of these policies the SNP could possibly support. Because we are avowed, we're open, we're straightforward, we're in favour of redistribution. And you know, the problem is they can't support very many of them. A couple of weeks ago, Nicola Sturgeon voted against the 50p tax rate in the Scottish Parliament. Just in advance of the manifesto, they change their policy. But what have all these things got in common? Think about these new sources of income. The mansion tax, as I said earlier, only one third of 1% comes from here in Scotland. Full fiscal autonomy would stop all of that money coming across the border. The banker's bonus tax, mostly raised out of the city of London, would stop that money coming across the border. That 50p top rate of tax, there are 16,000 people in Scotland that that would apply to, but there are 300,000 people across the whole of the UK. Again, that money would be stopped at the border. So, you know, we'll take no lessons in boldness or radicalism. And as for the idea that people would never forgive or forget, like most Scots haven't forgotten, haven't forgotten that they brought down a previous Labour government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most Scots haven't forgotten they brought down a previous Labour government and most Scots will never forgive them if they prevent this Labour government from being elected. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Simon, about the bottler thing. <laughs> I knew you knew what it meant. It was just a... Who's... <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry. East End of Glasgow this morning, um, and as someone who lives in the East End of Glasgow, I'd like to ask, which one of your manifesto pledges would make the biggest change for the working class people of the East End? Do you know, Margaret might have a real of your own view. I'll give you mine and Margaret will hers. And on the basis that I'm the leader, her view will be the same as mine. Do <laughs> um, <laughs> you think of me, though? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not frightened of you. I'm terrified of you. Um, I, th I think it's a, it's a pretty straightforward idea, which is that if you go to work, you're better off in work than you would otherwise be on benefit. Now, the one exemption to that would be um, parents with disabled children. Right? Because you've got to do... There's nothing you shouldn't do to support those mums or dads. But generally, if you go to work, you should always be better off than you'd be on benefit. Now, that's not an argument for cutting benefits. That's not an argument for making it life so uncomfortable and benefit that you're forced that way. But it is a sense that, that if you go to work, my view is that you should be able to earn enough to pay your bills. If you go to work, you should have predictability about when you're going to your work. There's no point in having a job if you don't know whether you'll get any work. If you go to work, you shouldn't have to go to a food bank in the way home to feed your children. If you go to work, the house that you come back to, you should be able to afford because there's controls on how much a private landlord 
can charge and hike up your rents. If you go to work, you should have access to some of the 20,000 new houses that the Scottish Labour Party promises in our manifesto. But it's just a simple... My argument would be it's a simple truth. You go to work, you shouldn't be exploited at work, you should get a guaranteed decent day's pay for that honest day's employment. And that's what runs through, right through our manifesto. It's an idea that Donald Drew and John Smith would have been proud of. And in our manifesto, I'm proud to say the party of John Smith and the party of Donald Dewar is back in business. Margaret to, mistakenly has a different answer. I'm going to abuse the privileges that I've got just now and just say, I completely agree with you, Jim. Oh. <laughs> um, and pay comes up all the times on the doorstep, just about how struggling people are just now. But I know that we've got Gordon Matheson, who is a leader of Glasgow City Council here. So let me make two simple points, and that is... When Labour was in power in the Scottish Parliament, Gordon will know this, that we refurbished and rebuilt 14 new schools in the East End of Glasgow. Since the SNP came into power, we've just got one new school because of Glasgow City Council. So we've got a job to do in the East End of Glasgow. They've cut the housing budget by a third. We've got to have better schools. We've got to have better public services. The only way I believe you can get that is by voting Labour on May the 7th. Jim, it was uh, oh, oh, Daniel Johnson through here from, from Edinburgh. Um, it was great to hear you set out so clearly the power of the Barnet formula to share and redistribute wealth right the way across the UK. And I was wondering if you'd agree that I think the Barnet formula is really becoming the key issue at this election. And I was just wondering your reaction to the increasingly bizarre position that the SNP seem to be adopting, that we can somehow keep the Barnet formula and have full fiscal autonomy. I was just wondering what your reaction is to that. You know, sometimes when the question is better than the answer, you're better not answering it. Um, like, you can't do the opposite simultaneously, which is what, what they're asking, to keep the Barnet formula and to have full fiscal autonomy. Their argument now appears to be we will, as a proud nation, keep all that we raise, full fiscal autonomy. But if that doesn't pay the bills, can we have some more money, please? <laughs> I mean, it makes no sense whatsoever. And at a time when look, these were the people that were so wrong on the oil price. What? $113 a barrel. Now, it's great, isn't it, when you go along to the garage and fill up your car and it's cheaper petrol? But those lower costs in filling up your car would have meant enormous cuts in taxes when it came to investing in schools and hospitals if we'd relied on full fiscal autonomy. They were out by a factor of 10. A factor of 10. So the truth is, between now and polling day, our argument is going to be very clear. The Barnet formula is great for Scotland. It's hundreds of pounds more for every Scot. It's hundreds of pounds more for each of us in our schools and our hospitals. And we now have just 20 days to save the Barnet formula. Because if we vote for the SNP, it's now clear that they will vote for full fiscal autonomy. And full fiscal autonomy, no matter which way you slice and dice or hide or run, full fiscal autonomy <coughs> means the end and the death of the Barnet formula. And we won't let that happen.